And so here I want to fill in what I think is most likely to explain this mysterious experiment in which serial passaging is taking place in monkeys in a way that does not appear to serve Pfizer's interest. Here's the missing element. You vaccinate the monkeys. If you vaccinate the monkeys and then you serially passage the virus through them, you detect the leak in your vaccine and you do see something like the next variant coming, right? In other words, he never says you vaccinate the monkeys and that's why this is such a head scratcher. But if you did vaccinate the monkeys and then you serially passage this vaccine, what you will get is an environment in which Wait, they- you serially, serially passage the virus. The virus through the, mm -hmm. through the monkeys. The virus will find the leak and it will evolve to exploit it. And it will become, the, the vaccine will be less and less effective, which if then- If the vaccine works on the, I mean- it, it, Oh, the vaccine will work. That's the beauty of the mRNA technology, isn't it? Right? If you can infect the monkeys and you deliver this mRNA so-called vaccine- I guess, yeah, if they're infectable with the virus, they're, yes. Right. Yeah. I mean, it is, look, it's an mRNA transcript. Their ribosomes will transcribe it as well as ours. So, yeah. okay, the vaccine works in the monkeys. You um, serially passage it. The virus defeats the vaccine because, of course, it will, which is mm -hmm. what you and I have been saying forever. Right. Right. This is too narrow a vaccine. So you can predict the vaccine will fail. Mm -hmm. The virus will evolve to overcome it. And what I think Jordan Walker is saying is, and then we will know the next vaccine we need way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And so the point is we can accelerate our development cycle yep. by exploiting the defects in our own vaccine and delivering supposedly curative vaccines that will also leak. We can just get ahead of this thing, mm -hmm. right? That would make a lot of sense. And frankly, it sounds a hell of a lot like pharma, right? Pharma is um, rather profoundly indifferent to the side effects of its own treatment. Why? In part because those will require other drugs. And so to the extent that it makes you sicker by giving you something that cures something you've got or yeah. helps, you know, the point is that oh, we got a drug for that too. It's, you know, it's, we've got an app for that, yeah. pharma version. It's interesting. I wonder, um, you know, it would be interesting to see the whole video because obviously Project Veritas has, has edited it um, to provide the most interesting parts. But the quote that I have here is him saying the way it would work is we would put this virus in these monkeys and then we successfully cause them to keep infecting each other and we collect serial samples from them and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the, these monkeys could just be like, we got these monkeys or, or he could be referring to, I've just been talking about these monkeys that we're vaccinating. Yes. Like he, he, he could have actually said that piece and we just don't know. That's true. It'd be interesting. It's, it's at least, you know, if it's not in the video, it doesn't tell us anything. Yeah. If it is in the video, it helps us test this hypothesis that yeah. that's actually what he's um, referring to. I did want to point out a couple things, Yeah. right? So we've got a hypothesis on the table about what he might actually have meant that he's misreported this and that the reason it doesn't make any sense is because he forgot an element or mm -hmm. didn't understand that that element was required. He yep. just knew that there was some plan to get ahead business-wise by creating variants that absent this wouldn't help. Yep. You will create variants, maybe, but they won't be useful. In this case, they'll be absolutely useful because basically you're using the virus to find your leak, right? How will right. a virus respond when there's when the when the immunity is not sterilizing? Okay, a couple things. One, if this is what Pfizer is doing, then it validates the idea which was central to the contentious battles we were in uh, when the variants problem first emerged about whether or not a trial was enough to cause the emergence of variants, right? Because the challenge mm -hmm. that many people offered to us was that it can't be that the vaccines, the so-called vaccines, are triggering the emergence of variants because the variants show up too early. The variants, however, show up in places where trials were held. Mm -hmm. And so the point is, well, Quickly. look, if you can do this in a, you know, how many monkeys do they have? Yeah. Let's say it's a thousand, that'd be a lot of monkeys, right? Um, but, you know, if a trial on a small number of monkeys is enough to give them information on variants, then the point is, well, it doesn't take very many. So that would sound like a trial. So yep. anyway, that's yep. one connection here. The other one is strange. Do you remember, you and I never delved very deeply because it's not our area of specialty. You know, you and I are not gene jocks. Um, but you remember 
Chris Martinson went after the question of why is Omicron so weird? Mm-hmm. That question has never been answered. Yeah. Okay. Omicron. It's, it's, it's it seems novel. Not only novel, mm-hmm. it seems to be, it seems that it was frozen in time that it is not descended from anything that was circulating at the time that it emerged. Right. Right? Yep, that's right. And the other thing that was weird about it was that it had an incredible ratio of non-synonymous mutations to synonymous mutations. Right? So mm-hmm. something had, it was like a hundred times the other variants. I don't know what variants. you mean by non-synonymous mutations to synonymous mutations. Um, the mutations that were recorded in this new... Mm -hmm. creature, Omicron, uh, were heavily biased in the direction of mutations that actually changed the protein sequence. Ah. Oh, okay. So with with the the ratio of mutations within Omicron was biased. Okay. Okay. By a hundred times the others. So it and was, what's the I can't I'm trying to think of like what the, what's the math on the usual ratio? The usual ratio in the other variants was less than one percent. Okay. And it was like Eighty okay. percent okay. in Omicron. So, what does that even mean? What is Omicron? Where did it come from? And you know, there are various possibilities, right? You and I talked about the possibility that it was a white hat attempt to vaccinate the world to shut down the pandemic. That somebody tried to take this out of the hands of the incompetent people who had yes, driven it in the first place. Mm-hmm. That was one possibility. Another possibility um, was that. Um, it's possible it was circulating in some way that we couldn't see it, though that would be very weird given how contagious the thing was, right? Mm -hmm. It's possible that we just didn't detect it because it was far enough off that the PCR test didn't uh, register it. Mm -hmm. Um, But another possibility is that somebody was playing games like maybe Jordan Walker is telling us we're going on at Pfizer and they lost their vaccine. Mm-hmm. I mean, they lost their their test environment, right? right? So they lost it into the world. They lost it into mm-hmm. the world. Which, if you think about it, if his experiment, that one he's describing, is just fixed, so it makes sense in the way I'm suggesting it would have to be, mm-hmm. right? If they vaccinated the monkeys, and then they serially passaged this thing, right? It's actually very similar to the attenuation program that you would use to generate. A real vaccine. If you weren't so hell bent on doing this with mRNA, right, you would maybe serially passage your virus to get a virus that wasn't so virulent. Yep. Right. And this could be an intermediate, right, that got out. They were planning to release a booster, an mRNA booster, and maybe, I don't know. So, anyway, I don't want to go too far down that road. I'm not saying I think this happened. I'm saying it belongs on the list of possibilities because the anomalies of Omicron are profound. They have never been explained. The experiment that seems to be described by Jordan Walker doesn't make sense in and of itself, but there might be an experiment that he heard about and didn't completely understand that would make sense. Or oh, didn't completely describe. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyway, I, it's certainly a fascinating story. Yeah, and it, and it brings together just to just to wrap it up. It brings together these you know these these two domains <clears throat> about which we spend a lot of time talking, right? The the corruption and decay of actual science, uh, and you know science ish domains, which includes like public health and um, and public health organizations like the WHO and the CDC, federal granting agencies like NSF and NIH, uh, and pharma, right? Um, such that m- so much of the science being done, and of course in academia as well, uh, is just either inexplicably badly designed such that it could not possibly reveal uh, what it's supposed to reveal, or the people doing it are so misunderstanding what complex systems are and how many things that they are messing with by changing, they're, they're claiming one variable and often they're be changing lots of them, uh, that there's no, there's no chance of success. So we've got like that space, which um, many people who can see the other space, the, the risks of DEI, of, of, woke, of the woke ideology uh, supplanting merit-based advancement and understanding in the world. Many people who can see that other thing, the, the, the woke ideology thing, 
have not been willing to say, maybe, maybe it's going to affect science and also what happens if the two of them come together. And it's, and, and you said this, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes ago, but like this, this is a story where they appear to come together. You've got, you know, the failure of science-ish domains as a result of greed and corruption and careerism and all of these things that we talk about all the time with the, you know, ascent of, it appears, someone and presumably someone's, lots of someone's, uh, through the ranks, making decisions that affect the entire planet who don't appear to have the skills, the understanding necessary to even be able to describe it to a layperson. How is it that those are the people who are making decisions on behalf of all of us? And what happens when that process, you know, as you and I have been warning, interrupts all functional systems? Yeah. Right? You know, we are, we are playing with the fate of the world here, and the bridges don't fall down right away, the airplanes don't fall out of the sky right away, but we're, we're working on legacy competence, and we are eroding the competence of the people who are actually needing to manage the new stuff as it arises. And, um, it, you know, disaster, it's not even coming. It's here. Bigger yeah. and bigger disasters are, are going to happen um, as a result of this. 